All right, turn with us today to the book of John and the very first chapter. We have planned on preaching a Father's Day message, but the closer and closer we got to today, um, the gospel and baptism just kept coming to, to our minds. So that's what we're going to preach on. Uh, so John chapter 1, we want to, to explain what baptism is today. We want to explain what baptism isn't today. And, and we just want to talk about the Lord and, uh, and, and lift up His name. John 1, before we get started, we want to open up with the word of prayer. Lord, we bow before you today. We ask God you take us, Lord, in your hands. Use us, God, for thy glory. Lord, for the glory of the name of thy Son above every name. Father, we pray. Draw the lost unto you, we ask. In Jesus' name, and amen. So, uh, Brother Caden's going to get baptized today. And we're thankful for that. We've got more baptisms to come. And we, we don't talk about baptisms often. Um, we, we don't preach on it generally a lot from the pulpit up here. Um, usually the adults have learned over the years what baptism is, what it isn't. And we, a lot of times, churches like ours, we rely on Diane or Dusty or if it's in another church, whoever the youth teachers are, to kind of explain what those things are. But we want to talk about that a little bit today. And, and, and right before we get into talking about baptism, I, I, I first want to talk about grace. Because you see, baptism never saves anybody. It never saves anyone. Baptism uh, is done after salvation. Baptism is, is a way to publicly express what you believe, that you've accepted the Lord, what has taken place in your heart, that you're in a union with Him. That's what baptism is. And it's also obedience following in the footsteps of Jesus. So that's what baptism is. It, it never saves anyone. And the reason I say that, you would be shocked with the amount of great preachers and great teachers there are throughout the years, the extensive amounts of commentaries there are in the world. I know people personally right now, I could take you to them, that believes baptism, one, either saves you, or two, baptism is necessary to make it to heaven. Neither one of those things are true. Neither one of those things are true. It is by grace through faith that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The Bible tells us that God the Father sent His Son into the world, that Jesus Christ would go to the cross, that He would bear in His body all of our sins, and not just ours, the Bible says, but the sins of the entire world. That he would take that upon himself, that God would pour out his wrath upon his son, so that you and I could, could go for him. And so that's how we're saved. It is by grace through faith. Now you say, well, what, what is grace? You know, we sing the old song, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. What is grace exactly? Well, we could give you a, a lot of different ways to explain grace, but the most beautiful picture I think there is of grace is the picture of Mount Calvary's hill. There's a man in the middle, and there's two men on each side. One man looked at the man in the middle. The man that looked upon him was a thief, and he said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And the man in the middle of the Lord Jesus said, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Salvation comes by faith and faith alone in Jesus. And it, it doesn't come any other way. As we sung Rock of Ages at the very beginning of service, I told you how much I like that line and that song in my hand. No price I bring simply to thy cross I claim. I have nothing that I can give. You have nothing you can give. You say, preacher, all that sounds fine, well, and good. Why? Why do I need to believe? Why do I need to be saved? Because we are all sinners. That's what we are. We're all sinners. You might say, well, I'm not that bad of a person. And, and, and by our normal human standards, you, you may not be. You may not have done anything that is, is horrible, anything that is awful. 
But just as we taught the teenage class, class this week, one illustration that came to my mind was this. We've all told a little lie, haven't we? And here's the truth of it. We've probably all told more than one little lie in our life. We probably at least lied multiple times. It makes us a liar. It makes us a sinner. Not only that, probably all of us have thought things. And, and on and on and on we could go. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so God declares that salvation comes by grace through faith alone. Nothing else can save. Only faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ. That thief on the cross, you know, we, we sometimes as humans make salvation so much more difficult than what it really is. We don't mean to, but we do. The man on the cross, the thief on the cross, he could not be baptized because he was hanging on a cross. How was he going to get baptized? He couldn't, could he? How was he going to walk down an aisle to an altar of prayer? He couldn't. He was dying, hanging on a cross. He couldn't call all of his family and friends and say, I got saved. He couldn't do that. He couldn't go talk to a preacher and say, Preacher, lead me through a prayer. He didn't have any of that. He couldn't join a church. He couldn't tithe. He couldn't do any of that. But he did the most important thing. He looked to the Lord and the Lord said, Verily or truly I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. He looked to Jesus. May I tell you today, my friend, if you're lost, look to Jesus. Don't look to me. Don't look to this church. Look to Him. Look to God. He'll save you. He'll make Himself real to you. He is able to do that. And so we wanted to bring that up first. And now as we look at this, and we'll, I promise you, I know we've got a lot to do today. We're going we're gonna to try not to be long. At the beginning of the ministry of Jesus, a man named John the Baptist came on the scene. John the Baptist, he came baptizing. Pretty good name for him, wasn't it? John the Baptist, he came baptizing people. As we have said so many times throughout the years, you guys probably get sick of hearing me say it, so much of the Old Testament is a picture or a shadow or an illustration of the Lord to come. In the Old Testament, there were so many ritualistic cleansings. But those ritualistic cleansings never truly cleansed. As the book of Hebrews says, the blood of bulls and goats the sprinkling of a heifer, those things never took away sin. They were things done looking to the one who could do that. And that one was Jesus. But John came to prepare the way, as, as we'll see. He came to prepare the way, and he began preaching and, and got quite the following. And he got quite a following, and, and it stirred up a, a big commotion amongst the religious leaders of the day, because John was nothing like them. They were very well dressed. They were very well educated. The other gospels tell us uh, that John the Baptist was a guy who wore camel's hair. His diet was locusts and honey. I can get down with the honey, but not the locusts. And he lived out in the woods. But he preached the gospel. He preached of one coming. He preached about the Lord. And man, there was a fire in his message. And he told people to repent and be baptized. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment. So the Bible says this. That as he was out there preaching and baptizing. It says in the 19th verse of John chapter 1. And this is the record of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him. Who art thou? I want, let me ask you that question today. Very quickly. Who are you? What, what defines you? That's an important question. What defines you? What defines your eternity? I think that's another major important question. All of you here today are, are, are good people, I know, as far as we consider each other to be as, as humans, but what defines you? I'm going to tell you plainly what defines me, Jesus. 
And listen, that needs to be what defines you as well. Who, who are you? Who are you? Are you saved? Are you a child of God? Are you on your way to heaven? Nothing more important than that. But they came to John. They said, who art thou? And you know, I, I love John because John, here in what he says, defines who we need to be as Christians. And, and it defines what the lost need to do as well. He confessed and denied not, but confessed. He said, I am not the Christ. Christians, we need to come to a place where we understand it is, it is not about us. It is all about Him. And listen, for the, the lost person, you need to come to a place where you understand that He loves you so very much. He loves you so very much. And, and you are not to be defined by what things you do in life. You're not to be defined. Who you are is, is, is not the amount of money you make. Who you are is, is not your job. Who you are is not your hobbies. You need to be defined by Jesus. Yes, your, your job and your hobbies and all that are great and wonderful and good. But so many people define who they are and they define their lives by what Jesus described as they, they build their house on sinking sand. It, it won't last in eternity. It won't last in eternity. So you, you need to understand you need to be defined by Him. John took all the focus off of himself. He said, I'm, I'm not the Christ. It's not me. He, he was getting such a, a large, such a large following. And so they asked him in the 21st verse, What then? Art thou Elias? Or, or Elijah? He said, I'm not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who art thou that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? What do you say of yourself? And let me ask this very, very important question. When the time comes that you stand, or I should say kneel, before Almighty God, who will you say that you are? What will you say of yourself? Will you say, Lord, I did nothing, but I believed the gospel. That's, that was all I had. Or will you try to say, well, I was, a, I was a good dad. It is Father's Day. I was a good dad. Maybe you are. Or you might try to say, I was a good husband. And maybe you are. Maybe you might try to say, I was a hard worker. I provided well for my family. All of that is fine, well, and good. But the fact of the matter is, as we say it out of the book of Romans, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. God desires to save people. God wants you to know how wonderful and how good He is. He wants you. I, I promise you this, and I told the youth this this past week as we talked. I said, look, a lot of you guys are, are young. I said, if you've not made the choice to follow Jesus, make the choice to follow Jesus. I didn't until I was 18. I got into things in my teenage years that I wish I'd never gotten into. When I came to the Lord, I found exactly what my soul was looking for. And the only regret I have, or the major regret that I have, is that I didn't do it sooner. Wish I'd have gotten saved when I was young. Wish I'd have gotten saved when the Lord was calling to me when I was a little boy. But man, that sin nature. It's something even when you're young, isn't it? It's something even when you're young. How that you'll say, nah. And Satan will come and whisper in your ear, don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. And so they said, what, what do you say of yourself? And, and here's, what, here's what John said. He said in the 23rd verse, I am the voice. Of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. See, John had a very different message than what the Pharisees were giving at that time. You say, what was different about it? Well, you see, when, when, when men, when people get a hold of, of God and His Word, we tend to mess things up, just to put it plainly. They did what so many of us have done. They, it, it began to be about performance. It began to be about how good they were. It began to be about how many rules they could follow it, and all this and that. And it, it, it ended up becoming this thing that it became back in the days of Isaiah and Jeremiah, where they would go through their little rituals. They would offer, make their offerings. The temple became a business more than anything. And it, they, they was going through all of that, but as Jeremiah said, your heart is, God told Jeremiah to write, your heart is far from me. 
God says, I don't delight in your sacrifices. I don't delight in your burnt offerings. God says, I want your heart. What well, John the Baptist came on the scene, he came preaching, repent, turn from your sin, be baptized. Not that the baptism itself, not that the going under of the water cleansed the soul. John was preparing the way for the one that could cleanse the soul. Listen to me today. You can, you can be a great person in this life. You can be a wonderful, wonderful person in this life. But until you know Jesus, you'll never feel the cleansing in your soul. You'll never feel the cleansing in your soul. And so, he said, look, he said, I'm, I'm just the voice of one crying in the wilderness. John told them to repent, and he baptized them as a, an outward showing of them turning from sin in their heart, preparing them for when Jesus would come. And so the Pharisees keep asking him, said, well, why are you baptizing if you're not Christ, you're not Elijah, you're not that prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom you know not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoe latch that I am not worthy to unloose. Listen, none of us are, are worthy to unbuckle Jesus' sand. But do you know that he came and willingly went to the cross for you? We're not worthy to untie his shoe. But yet he came for the purpose of bearing all the guilt, all the shame, all of the punishment that you and I deserve, he came to bear that on the cross for us. And so, after John said that, the Bible says this in the 29th verse. The next day, John sees, seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith unto him, Behold, look, he says, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. I'm not going to be a whole lot longer, but listen. There's only one that can take your sin away. His name is Jesus. When I read this and I see John, uh, the, the last Old Testament prophet, he says, Behold, look, the Lamb of God. When I read that, my mind goes to the book of Genesis. When God tested Abraham, he said, Take thy son, thine only son, Isaac, go offer him on the mount that I will show thee. Isaac was a full-grown man during that time. And as they went up, they had everything for a sacrifice. Isaac wasn't a fool. He says, we got the wood, we got everything we need, but I don't see a sacrifice. Abraham looked at him and said, son, God will provide himself a lamb. That's such an important statement. Why is that an important statement? Because as they went up, and Abraham was about to go through. God stopped it. And Abraham looked, and the Bible says, Behold, a ram caught in the thicket. Now that's not what Abraham said God would provide himself. Because that ram wasn't the fulfillment of Abraham's prophecy. Jesus is the fulfillment. God will provide himself. And the reason I said that's so important is because, listen to me today as I get ready to come to a close. Jesus is all you need. God provided everything you need for Himself. All He now asks you is believe and trust Him. The Bible says when you do that, you're not just baptized with water afterwards, but you're baptized with the Holy Spirit. Why is that important as we stand? That's important because you might look at yourself and you might say, Preacher, I don't think I've got takes. Uh, I've got it, it in me what it takes to to live the Christian life, and you're absolutely right. That's why Jesus baptizes with the Holy Spirit to help you. But listen, you must first give yourself to Him. 